Um, I was cleaning up and I ran across this circuit. Um, it was squirreled away in a funny, funny place. I've done a video on this before. I'll try to remember to link it down below. Um, uh, what this thing does is uh, create an, uh, what's called a Lorenz attractor. And you may uh, be familiar with it if you've ever seen a uh, waveform that looks like this. Uh, so I hooked it up because I remembered I had updated the XY mode on the uh, on the Rigel, and I just wanted to see how it was performing. So it's uh, it's doing really really nicely. Um, so I thought we would take a look, maybe a little more in depth about. Lorentz attractors, um, mostly for my own education. I, I know it's it's three differential equations that that creates this. Let's let's take a look at the at the actual circuit. I should I should preface this with um, the shape of that waveform. It kind of looks like a butterfly, and the work was being done, this chaotic theory for these equations that kind of mimicked chaotic theory was being done for weather uh, simulations. And uh, the fellow, I guess Lorentz, um, had published, or not published, he, there was a conference going on and his buddy was running the conference. He sent, the, he sent his paper into the conference late to his friend and his friend said, I really like it. We should, we'll, I'll try to get it in. And, but we need to change the title because your title's just really boring. And I need, I want more people to see this. So he goes, well, let's call it the butterfly effect because uh, it looks like a butterfly. And uh, so that's where the butterfly effect came from. And it has nothing to do with flopping butterfly wings in Brazil. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the actual circuit. Okay, so this, uh, if you go to Google and you uh, type in Lorentz Attractor, you could get to this page. So uh, Horowitz and Hill wrote this really nice book. Paul Horowitz, uh, this is his stuff. This is on his personal website at uh, Harvard. Um, so here, here are the equations, uh, dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt. So uh, these are basically, uh, with time, what is the change of the slope in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. So, so which way does it aim? Okay, and and these equations here give you directions of which thing, which way this thing is going to aim. And then s, r, and uh, x, b, yeah, s, r, and b. There we go. Uh, are some constants that are in this thing, and the constants have to be set in order for this thing to kind of go unstable and go into the chaotic nature of it. So these are the values that are used. All right, um, let's see here. The solution executes a trajectory, that's, that's what I was talking about, plotted in three dimensions that winds around and around, predictable or non-random, occupying a region known as its attractor. So when it spirals around, it spirals around an attractor. And it'll do that for a while, and then if it gets close enough to the other tractor, whoop, it'll go over there. And then it'll go around until it gets close enough to this tractor, and whoop, it'll go over there, okay? So that's, that's kind of the basics of this thing. Um, with lots of computing power, you can approximate the equations numerically. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next, okay? We're gonna go um, uh, do this thing with computing power. These days, that's really, really easy to do. And um, you'll see that it's, it's, it's a nice solution. All right, however, it's rather easy to implement these equations in an analog circuit. So this is what's known as an analog computer. Okay, what we just showed you there, that's, that's the output of an analog computer. Uh, using three op amps. Uh, the two of the op amps does an integration and one does a sum and then two analog multipliers to get the x, y, and the y, z. There's some of those multiplications and subtractions um, and then instead of doing differentials, we're going to be doing integrals. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the circuit, um, and you can just build it like he has, and it works great. Um, I had to make a change because I couldn't find the MPY six three four or. Uh, I had an equivalent, so I used, where's my magnifying glass? I used a 
AD633. So the multiplier I used was an 8633. So its pinout may be different, and anyway, I don't have a schematic for mine, um, but it, this is the schematic. If you use a different multiplier, you may have to change the pin numbers and stuff. But the output of these um, op amps here give you X minus Y and Z, all right? All right, so he shows his picture here on his oscilloscope. He says it's an owl's face. It's, it's the butterfly. <laughs> I don't know why he's calling it an owl's face. It's the butterfly. Let's take a look at these equations uh, that Lorentz has, and we'll go into my office and we will do a computer simulation of these, and I think you'll, you'll see something interesting. All right, I went to Wikipedia, and under Lorentz system, it uh, shows you some of these uh, uh, equations stuff that uh, Lorentz did in 1963. Uh, there's some analysis and stuff. You can read all about this. You can look at different values you put in here and you can see whether it's stable or not. And um, uh, anyway, a whole bunch of stuff here. What I did find though is a MATLAB simulation. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this MATLAB um, simulation. So I've pasted it into Octave. Octave is a free uh, free uh, clone of of MATLAB. So I've put it in here. I've added one statement, which was clear all. That just closes down your graphics uh, window and creates a, a new one. So when you run it, it'll always create a new and, and pop the window up. Uh, so here is the code that they they generated. And you can see if this, looking, looking at the... Um, equation in this particular plane, you see the uh, butterfly effect, but it was really, really lumpy and I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that at all. And I went through the code here. It's a very, very simple code because uh, MATLAB has built into it ODE. ODE is ordinary differential equation. So you put an equation in here and you just tell it, go solve it and it does it for you. So it's using ODE 45, which is using a, um, a mathematical routine called the, I can't pronounce it, Runge Kuta. Um, and it says the fourth, fifth, that's why it's called ODE 45. It uses the fourth, fifth order of the ordinary differential equation solver. Now, I wasn't familiar with that. I took a whole bunch of math in, in uh, college, and uh, this doesn't sound familiar at all to me. So, it was actually not invented until 19, 1997, so way way past my time. Um, there is a, a second order, third order, though, which is ODE 23. So let's put in ODE 23, and let's run that. And uh, you can see that it it does a much, much better job. So yeah, uh, ODE 23 is the, is the way to go, all right? So this is what we were seeing on the oscilloscope. And uh, there's two attractors, one here, one here. But if we move, see, this is a three-dimensional plot. And if we move this three-dimensional plot, you can see that there's one system that orbits this away and one system that orbits this away. And these are the two attractors. So it kind of flip-flops between the two. Every once in a while, it, it loops down and it can come back to this way. Um, and so... Sometimes it stays here for a while, then it loops up and around. You can see the starting condition here. Here's the starting condition way down here at the bottom. It loops all the way around, um, and then it spirals around this one, and then it finally, woo, gets onto this one and zooms around here. So, yeah, this is really cool. So, I, if you have the time and inclination and stuff, you can uh, download Octave for free and uh, put this program in there and have fun with it. Um, we can change some of the parameters, so let's uh, let's do that. We can change, uh, let's say sigma. Let's do twenty. I think I've seen that number before. And here you go. So in this particular case, um, it seems to be quite stable around here, and then it went whoa. And it seemed like it was trying to do something else, but maybe we didn't let it run long enough, okay? So in the code, uh, this line here tells you, uh, you uh, put in the function that, you're, that you want to uh, differentiate, which is this, this function here. That's 
That's these three differential equations all typed together. There's a com uh, there's colons between semicolons between these. So, the, so the, that is the equation that we're used to. But this says it's going to be zero and one hundred in time. Let's go between zero and uh, five hundred in time. So that'll let it run five times longer, and we'll see what happens. Did that help any? No. Oh, maybe this was the starting condition. It went over, and then it, now it's just stuck here forever. That was probably it. So, yep. We could choose a different starting condition. We could say maybe uh, uh, zero. Let's try that, see if it does anything different. Different starting condition. No, it didn't really, didn't really do anything. All right, so 20 wasn't a good number. So what, we started with 10. Let's put in 15. Let's see what happens with that. Did I push the button? This may be zipping around looking for a solution and I can't find one. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh I, hit, I pushed it twice. So now it's got to do it twice. Oh, I'm still having it running to 500, which is a long time. We'll have to put that back. All right, let's put this back to, to 100. Yeah, I'll let it run with 15. See how it's doing. Uh, it's taking a long time. What's command window here? Yeah. Oh, there it is. It finally finished. All right. But not much different. So I think there's a real narrow range of... Uh, the, the, the eyes are different, right? This one, I think, one side was smaller than the other, so we, we did we did affect that with this uh, with this change. Uh, what was that? That was fifteen. Let's make it lower. Let's make it something like seven. Let's see what that does. We'll try some of these other things too. Yeah, that one works. That one works. Oh, it's kind of elongated now. Oh, look, these are these are more round and yeah, that's interesting. I like that one. Okay, let's change beta. Let's change beta to say nine, nine thirds. Does that do anything? Um, yeah, there we go. Oops. Yeah, that didn't really do anything. It, like I say, it's very, very temperamental which uh, which numbers you put in here. So there is this condition that Lawrence came up with that makes everything everything work right and let's try row of I don't know say 10 I don't know what that does ah there we go so that's kind of fun anyway you can play with this thing and um, make it do different things oops let me do the rotatey thing here oops oh yeah it's, it's got a this weird wobble in it right it's pretty it's pretty neat math that's for sure this back to 28 put everything back to zero and make it run again yeah there we go anyway I just want to show that off today it's it's a very interesting uh, very interesting set of equations and plot especially in 3d if you've never seen it in 3d before 